Siri, what's the name of the song in the Thor Ragnarok trailer that goes, Aah! Sorry, I don't know who performs trailer that goes. Oh, come Hulk, that's right. <laughs> what's up, geeks, nerds, and all that line between? I'm just a common fan, back with another video, and I have with me just a common baby. Or just a common toddler, I guess it should be called. That's Nolan. Say hi, Nolan. Wave to the people. <laughs> Today, we are continuing our countdown to Infinity War as we talk about my top five favorite Marvel movies, my Mount Rushmore of the MCU, if you will. And today, we're talking about a movie that features a certain green jade giant. As you know, if any war comes out this week, we can't wait. I'm so excited. I wish I could take this little guy with me, but he's too young, and it's going to be amazing. So, at first, want to say hi? And I think if you can see something that's going on down here in Nolan's hands, then you can see what we're going to talk about today. But before we get to that, I want to give you my honorable mention for the day. And I know that this is a movie that not a lot of people like, that not a lot of people are into, that a lot of people have problems with for a lot of reasons. But I love it because I'm an OG Hulk fan, and that is The Incredible Hulk starring Edward Norton. Now, don't get me wrong, I know Edward Norton had a hand in changing the script and then working with the director of the movie, and, and he, he put his hands all up in stuff that maybe he shouldn't have been a part of, but I still think it's really an enjoyable movie. It really captures, captures that nomad aspect of, of the Hulk. It, it, oh, you're hugging the Hulk because he fell. It really captures that nomad aspect of the character. I really like the abomination. I really liked... General Ross. I love the effects. I love the fighting. I love Hulk just wrecking stuff and ripping stuff in half. I loved it. Um, I do think Mark Ruffalo was a better choice for the MCU and a better Hulk, but I do really, really enjoy this movie a lot. But we're going to move on to a movie that we're actually going to talk about that's on my top five. Um, the Incredible Hulk is definitely in my top ten, but in my top five we're talking about today is going to be Thor. Ragnarok. So as you can tell, we're pretty big fans here in this house of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and comics in general. As you see Nolan sitting here, his Spider-Man pajamas, um, me and my Hulk t-shirt, and this little figure here. Can we show the camera? Look, can you show the camera? This little figure here is probably my favorite uh, Funko bobblehead that we own, and it's Hulk from Thor Ragnarok. Not only do I like it because it has that uh, Planet Hulk feel to it. Uh, and if you haven't read the Planet Hulk comics, please do go check them out. But also, um, it's one of my favorites because we Nolan actually won this by being so super cute and awesome. So there was a, a competition at my local Mar uh, Marbles, at my local IMAX theater, and they post it and they say, you know, tell us who your favorite uh, Marvel character is, and you could potentially win one of these Thor Rhino Rock bobbleheads. And I posted a picture, it might have been cheating, but I posted a cute picture of him dressed as the, the Hulk for his, that's right, Hulk. I posted a picture of him dressed as the Hulk for his first Halloween, and I want because I mean, come on, look at this face. Like, how can I not? And so, since he won this, oh, since he won the hi, oh, hugs. Since he won this Hulk, the Hulk lives in his room on his bookshelf with a couple of his other comic book stuff. He has an Avengers lunchbox and a, and a couple other things in there. Uh, so, yeah, it lives in his room uh, because he won it. But it's definitely something that we get to enjoy together. Uh oh, don't drop him. He's heavy. I also love this bobblehead because it's so big. So, Thor Ragnarok. Amazing movie. At, um, I honestly, it was... Thor's movies were actually the ones I enjoyed the least in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I didn't really like the original Thor. I didn't, really, didn't like at all Thor The Dark World. But Thor Ragnarok hits me where it hurts. It got me here. I absolutely love it. Um, I think Thor is often outshined in his own films by either his other castmates or Loki. And don't get me wrong, I love the Destroyer Hi. I love the Destroyer armor in the original Thor movie. But I um, absolutely love Thor Ragnarok. From the color palette um, that was brought to us by director Taika Waititi to the cast of Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, 
Mark Ruffalo. Um, it just, I loved it. And, and come on, any movie that has Jeff Goldblum playing an alien is awesome because I'm pretty sure Jeff Goldblum is an alien anyway. You know what I mean? I just, I've loved Jeff Goldblum since I was a kid in the original Jurassic Park as Dr. Ian Malcolm. So seeing him in this movie just was everything to me. Also, Chris Hemsworth's comedic timing, maybe it's just the writing, maybe it's the director, but it has improved so much. And and I was really a fan of a, a Thor and a Thor movie. Who, who would have thought? When he's talking to Surtur and he's hanging upside down. And he's spinning, 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 and he's trying to talk to Surtur, and he's like, hold on, wait, I have to wait for this thing to come, come back around, hold on. And he comes back around, and he keeps talking to him. Classic humor. It's an easy gag to pull off, but with Chris Hensworth timing, it worked. And then, the opening fight scene with Thor and 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 Surtur, and Surtur's minions, and how he brought back the head of Surtur, I thought that was incredible. Um, learning that Hela was Thor and Loki's long-lost sister... That kind of upset me because I was like, come on, like, does all of Thor's major villains have to have some kind of relation to him? Like, I hope they don't try to redeem her character and make her, you know, appear in other, other Marvel movies. But uh, thankfully, well, I have a theory that she will, but I'll talk about that later. But um, having her show up in the scene where she destroys Thor's hammer, I mean, mind blowing. Talk about setting the stage for a villain. Any villain that can just destroy Molnir in one grasp is a villain that you don't want to mess with. Um, also, when the movie started off and Loki was pretending to be Odin and he had Matt Damon acting out a play between him and Thor. <laughs> between him and Thor, I thought that was really hilarious. I thought that was funny. Um, and also, I like the fact that we didn't spend the whole movie wondering, will Thor know or not know that Loki is pretending to be Odin? I'm happy that they were just like, no. Thor knows, and he's going to expose Loki, and he's going to make Loki pay for his crimes, and then within that process is how they Loki ends up on Sakaar, and then Thor eventually ends up on Sakaar as well. I love Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. She's probably my favorite female character in the Marvel movies. I know we still have Wasp to come. I know we still have Captain Marvel to come, but unless they introduce She-Hulk, which I love some She-Hulk. I'm pretty sure that that may remain with Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie. Uh, Tessa Thompson said in interviews that she played Valkyrie as like a bisexual, but I didn't get those vibes from the character. But I did get a lot of Jessica Jones from the character. A lot of pain, torment, all being masked and pushed down by alcohol. She used all her money for bounty hunting to buy more alcohol. I thought that was hilarious. But the fact that hi, but the fact that Thor was able to convince her to to fight against Hela, the woman who destroyed her whole. Uh, all of her people, the Valkyries, I think was awesome. And Marvel, let me tell you something. The, the color palette and the imagery and the effects used for when the Valkyries fought Hela, that needs to be more than a uh, flashback. That needs to be a movie. Give us a Valkyries movie because that was incredible. That's probably one of my favorite scenes of the movie. Favorite scenes of the trailer. I really thought it was going to be a much longer battle in the movie. Unfortunately, it was just flashbacks, but it still got me hooked. I love it. Um, and obviously, my favorite part in the movie is when Thor is about to fight um, in the arena. He, he got his hair cut, which I'm sure Chris Hemsworth is probably pushing. Like, all right, guys, I've done a lot of these movies, and I'm and I'm tired of wearing this wig. Can you please cut my hair so that I don't have to wear this wig anymore? So thankfully they did. But he's in the arena. He has this cool new outfit, this cool helmet. I think it's the best Thor has ever looked, by the way. And then he's getting ready to face his challenger. And then we all know it's coming because we saw it in the trailers. But then it goes, featuring our champion, the Incredible. And then Hulk just busts out. He just goes, Rawr! And then Thor's immediate reaction is, yes! And the crowd goes silent. <laughs> and then he looks up at the Grandmaster. He's like, we know each other. He's a friend from work. I lost it. Even though I saw it in the trailer, I knew it was coming. I saw it in the movie. I still loved it. The fight between them was hilarious. Their banter and their, banter and their movie was hilarious. And I really want more Thor, Hulk, uh, slash Bruce Banner action comedies. Because, I mean... 
every line between Thor and Hulk and Thor and Banner, I love it. The movie is also instantly quotable. It stays with you after. Um, the fight scenes on the end of it, at the end where they were fighting to protect the Bifrost were awesome. I do think that they kind of... Uh, uh, bit off a little bit of Mortal Kombat with Thor's abilities, because I'm pretty sure Thor turned into Raiden at the end of the film with all the lightning coming out of him. And it, was, it was, and it was cool to see the lightning going through his eye. But he even stole Raiden's Mortal Kombat move where he did that jumping cyclone through everybody. But still, seeing Thor actually channel the powers that he has without Molnir and being able to just be a pretty much just a bad A dude, can't curse for the children, Bad A dude was really cool with that, and also Thor um, still feeling some kind of way that he didn't take part in Civil War, and we all know where he was if you watch the Marvel one shots. You know that he was sharing an apartment with someone, uh, and that person is now sharing an apartment with the Grandmaster. Um, but for Thor to name his team, he's like, we need a team name, and he names them the Revengers because he just misses the Avengers so much. I thought that was hilarious. And yeah, I just love this movie. I mean, I didn't, I went into Thor Ragnarok not thinking I was going to have this much fun, and I absolutely love it. I think about the movie all the time. I quote it all the time, and it's definitely in my top five. There's tons of other reasons I, I loved it, and some reasons I didn't like it, but I'm just going to eat it there. I love it. It's definitely in my top five. So, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us and talking about Thor Ragnarok as we continue our countdown to Infinity War. Um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see this movie. Uh, Infinity War is going to be incredible. Where does Tell me down below. Make sure to comment, like, share this video. Where does Thor Ragnarok lie in your Marvel favorites? Is it in the top 10? Is it in the top 5? Is it on your Mount Rushmore of Marvel movies? Let me know. And also, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell below uh, to make sure you are notified of all the videos that I have coming up this week as we count down to Infinity War. I love this, this film. I think it's great. I can't wait for Infinity War. I love this guy. And I'm going to let this guy sign us out. Noah, Noah you want to say bye to the people? <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a common fan. Hey, no, no.